You're watching Everfree Radio. You're watching Everfree Radio. You're watching Everfree Radio. Yeah, while they let people in. Yep. And now, Everfree Radio presents Stay Brony, my friends, with Dusty Cat. It's uh, Monday evening here on Everfree Radio, if you hadn't guessed. And I am your faithful servant, Dusty Cat, along with my special guest, Mr. Bobby Knorr. Bobby! You there? Hey, everybody. woo -hoo! Bobby's here. And you're, like, on family vacation off in Colorado, correct? Bob? Excuse me? You're off in Colorado, aren't you? Yeah, I, right now I'm in beautiful Golden, Colorado on vacation <gasps> with my family. That's where the Rocky Mountain water is. Definitely. The Rocky Mountain water. The spring that makes the banquet beer. Coors. Actually, funny story about that. We yes. actually, um, we were about to go to the uh, Coors um, tour. The mm -hmm. factory's literally like a block away. Yeah. Huge factory. Mm-hmm. But um, my parents were a bit beat from the uh, trip. <laughs> Driving down six degree inclines is pretty scary in the yeah. rain. Yeah, so. it is. Yeah. I, uh, I drove that in my Ford Ranger in 1991. Going, going down the six, the 6%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It wasn't happy. It wasn't fun. But anyway, um, Rob is the producer, project guy, lead for all those wonderful cartoons, epic everything time. Epic cupcake, epic pie, and, you know, epic wub, 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 wub. So, if you don't know who he is, which I highly doubt, but I've put together this little two-minute teaser for you people. So, why don't you all watch this, and we'll be back in about two. I'm going to...
called me a bitch! Next time, we eat Skrillex! <laughs> How was that? <laughs> so, that was, uh, that was all of the Epic Wub time, Epic Cupcake time, Epic Pie time, all cut together. A little sneaker in there. Did you figure out which scene was the sneak scene? And that was put to Bronafide's epic metal medley of some of the uh, fan-produced works uh, out there. So I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, Bobby. Yes. Yes. Yes, you're there. Um, so tell me a bit about producing these things. I mean, these things are huge. You've got a lot of people involved. Uh, tell me about some of your crew. Well, I guess it all started, uh, originally started just me and Evan. Uh, mm. I do audio mixing, stuff like that. I know a lot of voice actors from uh, some cartoon fan dubs they used to do back in the day. So one day, I just, I was really into Pony, and uh, I was also really into Epic Mealtime. Ah. So I came up with a short script with a few friends, and we kind of threw together this um, Epic Cupcake Time, uh, basically just a parody of... Epic Meal Time, mm -hmm. and um, it used to be a radio play, so we just kind of had that out. It got like you know forty thousand hits, mm -hmm. and then my animator, who I've become really good friends with, his name's Evan. He lives in Australia. Right. Uh, he also goes by No More Than Nine on YouTube. He came up to me and he's like, "Hey, do I have permission to animate this?" And I was like, "Sure, send me what you got." And he made Epic Cupcake Time, which I was just blown away oh, by. Yeah. And um, I sent it to a few people, including the guys actually from Epic Meal Time, mm -hmm. and uh, they reposted it, and it just it went completely viral. I mean, yeah. it went everywhere. I'm surprised that they actually liked it. I mean, like, they don't seem like the kind of guys that would uh, repost something like that. But it's, it's more power to them. Nice, nice actually, of them to do that. Actually, at one point, the um, I was emailing Harley about it, and mm -hmm. we for the second one, Epic Pie Time. Originally, we were actually going to work together. Oh, uh, really? But yeah, they had um, they had a, a I think a pilot they had to do. Or I don't. I heard they had some project coming up, so it things didn't really pan out. So um, we went a different direction with Epic Pie Time. Oh, okay. Yeah, those guys are freaking bees. I yeah. A lot of people. A lot of people are saying you know after I did my uh, my cooking special, they said, oh, you should hook up with Epic, you know, Epic Meal Time. It's like yeah, those guys don't want me. They're too busy with their own stuff. It's like <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so, um, where, where do you live originally? I don't really remember. I live near, I live near Chicago. Chicago. Uh, it's a town 50 miles south of it in Chicago land called Crown Point. Crown Point. So you guys are like on the epic family adventure. Yeah. we uh, we drove cross country from Chicago through, uh, Missouri, New Mexico, Arizona to Las Vegas, which we stayed at for five days. Wow. And then we're heading back through the north, so Colorado, Nebraska, mm -hmm. the Dakotas, and uh, Iowa. Ah, okay. You have to stop. Oh, wow. If you're going through South Dakota in the next couple of weeks, watch out for the motorcycles. Because it's Sturgis time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Well, I'll have to keep an eye out for that. Yes. We're probably uh, going to be going through Dakota Wednesday? Wednesday. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, it's a... Uh, the Sturgis is a couple of weeks away, so we we'll probably be through it long oh, okay. before then. Yeah, because in, a, in about a couple of weeks, it's all motorcycles all the time <laughs> over there. <laughs> um, so the so your production, um, you do some voices too, right? Yeah, I did the voice for um, I guess Pliskin Twilight mm -hmm. in our little throwback to Escape from L.A. Yeah. And I also do the the uh, Jason Statham esque pony in uh, Epic Web Time. Ah, awesome! The uh, yeah, I really like the whole Snake Plissken thing because I, I grew up in that era when that film first came out. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, as soon as I saw Twilight, it was like, uh, that's Snake Plissken. And everyone goes, no, it's this, no, that's Snake Plissken. That's Snake. And then well, then the you... thing is, a lot of people say it's Solid Snake, and the thing yeah. is, is that. Solid Snake is based off, off of Snake, Snake Plissken, Plissken from Escape from New York. Right. So it's kind of, it's even if you say it's related to this, yeah, it's still, it's still related to that. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I, I I love I love him and everything. Um, I I have this big trouble in Little Canterlot in my head that I want to do. 
which, which is big trouble in little china by the way if anybody hasn't seen that movie go see it it's a freaking roar it's really funny um so you now have you've gone to pie you've gone to cupcake and you've gone to wubbing okay and you you wubbed one out um but the so now you're going to jackie chan adventures yes jackie chan i that's incomprehensible that you would throw Jackie Chan in with Pony in with Epic Mealtime. What what's going on here? Well, the thing is that once we got to Epic Wub Time, yeah. it's part of the Epic Pony Time series, but mm-hmm. we wanted to kind of start pulling away from Epic Meal Time because everybody's expecting, oh, what food are you gonna do next? And I was like, you know, mm-hmm. I don't really want to do a food. I want to mm-hmm. do something that's I mean, Epic Pie Time really took heavily from Epic Meal Time, and I yeah. wanted to do something that was more original yeah. to its base mm-hmm. and didn't require food. Yeah. So, originally, we actually were going to have uh, Epic Fun Time with Luna, right. but things kind of. Uh, Devolved. Uh, the voice actress we had for Luna kind of flaked out, and oh. the whole thing just didn't really end up happening. So, mm-hmm. instead, we decided a lot of people really loved vinyl in Epic Pie Time. Oh, yeah. Total. Yeah, like, that's what everybody always talked about. Yep. And the whole final scratch thing during the season finale was kind of coming up, and everybody was really talking about that a lot. Right. And so what we wanted to do was wanted to do something original with characters, mm-hmm. something something crazy, something ridiculous, but something that would not be about food, right. but would still be epic. Uh-huh. I guess we're not really... Now the Epic Pony Time series has kind of become... Not a epic mealtime parody, but a yeah, epic pony a series of epic things. Right. At least in my opinion, a series of epic things that people won't expect, and I'm right. hoping that because they won't expect it, they're still surprised every time they see. Yeah. Something. Well, now you've had Octavia Vinyl Scratch. Now I can see epic hand time with Bon Bon and Lyra. I can see it now. It's in my head, <laughs> epic hand time. Uh, I don't know about that. Actually, um, oh. <laughs> I have. I have one more idea for. We actually have two projects coming out. Um, we have the Epic Crossover Time, which is the right. Jackie Chan yeah, Adventures Jackie Chan. crossover. Right. And we're going to do a short between then with uh, another short with Vinyl and Octavia. Ah. It's something really short and simple, but a lot of people liked Epic Web Time. So we yeah. figured we'd do another small skit with Vinyl and Octavia. Mm-hmm. And it'd just be called, you know, The Musicians of Ponyville, colon, the whatever's yeah. going, going on. I'll give more details into it later once it's actually in production. Mm-hmm. But um, we're doing one more skit with them. And then later on, I've actually had some ideas for a project later on that would actually be not Pony, but that's something that will be farther down the road. I need to flush it out more, but mm-hmm. it'll pull a little bit from Pony in terms of characters. And I think once the idea is actually flushed out, people might, might see it, might not. Mm-hmm. But... Um, in terms of pony projects, I think after epic crossover time, right. I only see there being one more epic time before we start pushing yeah, on to different stuff. Pushing projects. on different stuff. Well, by that time, you got epic, you got the season three starts, right? And then yeah. there's then there's more things to pull from. There's more ideas to to to, to sweat the appetite. Um, and we did have a we did have a bit of a spoiler. They they released a picture that is supposedly the evil minion or, or the evil guy from the uh, the the two part season three opener um, yeah, yeah un, unnamed but man he's creepy Ooh. I didn't I didn't pull a picture of him I think I'm sure you people have saw it it's, it's on EQD go check it out but you know he's got like this big old war helmet with discord horns coming out of it and it's like whew, this one's gonna be epic so well uh really looking forward to that um so we're gonna go with some standard questions that we all ask. Um, you uh, okay? Favorite episode one and two, season one two. Favorite episode of season one is definitely. Um, oh man, I'm drawing a blank for it now. Uh, Party of one. Oh, that's yeah. that's the yes. episode that got me into MLP. Ah, the crazy. Yeah, that Pinkie Pie going bonkers like that just threw me for an entire loop. of... <laughs> what the show was about because yeah. I never expected that at all mm-hmm. I was expecting it's going to be you know kitty kitty yeah. ugu sunshine not, and lollipops sunshine and flowers not you know something just yeah. a lot I guess I've always 
I've always been really biased against MLP mm-hmm. back in the day because you know I saw the only thing I was ever exposed to was Generation Two. Would they look like Oof. like hungry hippo ponies? Yeah, and creep me Horrible. out. They really creep me out. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> you know, the writing's bad, the voice acting's terrible, and the only difference between all the characters is their color. Yeah, yeah. there's just there's no real depth to it. Nope, none. It's stunk. And stunk, stunk, stunk. And just the depth of the characters in the show and, mm-hmm. and just the the pushing to try to create something different yeah like in party of one just really just blew my mind mm-hmm. well it, it's uh, when you had fluttershy go looking for a service training on a little kid show i was like wait a minute <laughs> what's going on here and then then you got iron will trying to be you know mr t or hulk hogan all wrapped up into one um there's no way, you know, some nine-year-old kid's gonna get those jokes. I still wish, I still wish that they had had Randy Savage to do oh, it. Oh yeah, because that would have just been that would have been awesome. Amazing. Yeah, too bad he died last year. Uh, sad, sad, sad day to me. I was a big Randy Savage fan. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, Are you yeah. ready? Are you ready? Snap into Slim Jim. Yes. <laughs> it becomes one big commercial for Slim Jim. <laughs> yes. Mmm. Mmm. Ah, it's hot in here today. I, I can't wait till summer's over in San Jose because the sun is like right there, pounding on the front wall of our house. At this time of day. It's ridiculous in the way over here. Oh, man. It's hot. So the. I think it got to a max of 119 what? when we were driving into Vegas. Yeah, 119. Oh, yeah, it's Vegas. That's what the car was saying. It's Vegas. 119 when we were driving into Vegas. Yep. But it's dry. It's a dry heat. It's a dry heat. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you couldn't tell me when I lived in Phoenix and it was 123. That's yeah, so oh, a man. dry heat Cooking. my foot. Go outside, dry heat my flank. Yeah. Um, let's see. What other major little projects are you working on? I know you've got like all these irons in the fire with all of these different cartoons going on. Is there anything else like uh, at all music or, or anything you got going on? Well, um, the overall goal for our group is to become a production group. Mm-hmm. Which, um, when we release our next big project, we're going to have you know website out, contact right. information, staff information, a bunch of stuff. And you guys have actually named your, um, named your group something, didn't you? Yeah, it's Alligator in the Tub Productions. Alligator in the Tub, okay. And um, they can find right you now, on Twitter and all that. Under- yeah, you can find me. You can find our group on Twitter and Tumblr. Our website should be up hopefully within a month. Ah, cool. But um, in terms of bigger projects. I guess you all, everybody knows about Epic Crossover Time right now. Yeah. Um, the smaller vinyl skit. Mm-hmm. We have a bigger project we did for a group, but um, I can't really go into detail about that until I get permission from them. And we've been uh, contacted by somebody else who I'm attempting to contact about for future deals. But uh, in the meantime, no, that's that's about, about it. it. Huh? about it so let's talk about hmm, what were your as a animation guy as a production animation guy how, how what were your feelings on uh can wedding the two episodes um did you feel that it was handled well did you feel that they sh- they scrunched too much stuff into a story did you feel that you know what were your feelings um on, now that you're that deep into the into making animation you know, yeah. how, 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 are you, how are you looking at the show now that you've done animation, you've done production animation for a couple of months? How are you looking now at the show? Are you looking at it differently than when you first found the show? I look at it a little differently, but, I mean, the animation overall is still great. I'm not an animator. Mm-hmm. I do sound design, scripting. I do basically everything but the animation itself. I work with storyboard artists on the project. Um... But animation-wise, I still think it's brilliant. It's really well done, and that's something that I think they've had going for them since the beginning. Oh, yeah. Because everybody, when they think Flash, they think of, oh, it's cheap animation. Mm -hmm. But in all honesty, you can do a lot with Flash. I mean, I know people who've done full-fledged cartoons with Flash. I mean, in France, there's the uh, Wakfu cartoon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Done anime style, all done in Flash. All done in Flash. Uh, Dan Versus, which is a great show, mm-hmm. that's all done in Flash. That's all done in Flash. And Flash, I think, it gets a lot of flack because sometimes it can be really yeah. uncooperative. 
put it, and there are some things that obviously Flash is not as efficient as that Toon Boom or other programs could do mm-hmm. better. But in terms of the animation of the show, I think it's really great. And more importantly, just the close connection that you have with the production people, mm-hmm. like you know, Sibsy or Jason Thiessen. Oh yeah. Just how they how they communicate with the fans and all that. Mm-hmm. I think it really helps people grow as well. Oh yeah, this, this is awesome. Um, last week. I pimped a friend of mine, artist uh, Baron Engel, um, who drew some new stuff. He draws ponies on motorbikes, and he, he has a dreamscape going on where his character is in, in Equestria. He's been drawing all the stuff from his dreamscape. And he's a beautiful pencil artist, but his, his watercolor, his uh, colored pencil, excuse me, look like a painting. He's been doing it for decades. And um, he told me yesterday that, can I get a hold of Sipsy? I said, well, maybe I can get a hold of this. So, yeah, what's going on? He, he says, well, I got this drawing I want to do with her OC flying at dusk and blah, blah, blah. I said, dude, just do it. No, I don't know if she's getting fanboyed. It's like, just do it. So I actually sent Sibsy some of his art, you know, over Twitter. I said, go look at this. He really wants to do something with with over, with your uh, with your OC. What do you think? And she, and she goes, oh, hey, yeah. I want, oh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's awesome. So I sent that back, I sent that to Baron, and he went, she said that? About my stuff? I was like, dude, just do it. You're better than you think. Just, ah, I beat on him. Ah, so much better than he thinks. Uh, where are we at? We're at 22 minutes. Let's see, what else can we talk about? Um, hmm. So we talked about animation. We talked about how you see the show. We talked about favorite episodes. How about favorite pony? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, one does not simply walk into motor art and pick a favorite pony. <sighs> Tell me about it. Uh, mm. Okay, main six or all of them? Everybody! There ain't no such thing as knocking off the main six, man. It's like all ponies. Oh, oh it's so hard. Um... I guess I'd have to say I really like the idea behind Daring Do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I really like the whole um, idea behind just the kind of Indiana Jones-esque kind of character. And I think that a lot more could be done with her, which actually was one of the projects I had in mind for the future. I'm thinking you've got lots of room for Daring Do and Mirdewell. I'm thinking that, you know, you could have... Rainbow Dash in the background reading a Meredewell comic book. You know, this season. I can see it happening. He's, she's sitting in there reading something in the library in the background, because they already had her reading a Daring Do book in the background, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking they'll draw, like, a Daring Do... She's reading a Daring Do comic book, just to throw that in the background. Um, and now that it was announced at San Diego Comic-Con that they're actually doing a My Little Pony comic book, which is going to be yeah, completely separate stories. From the show, it's not going to be a retelling of the show. It's going to be completely separate stories. So I'm thinking that they could have like one-offs of, you know, the whole cover would be Daring Do, or the whole cover would be Mare Duel, and the inside would be you know a Mare Duel or a, a or Daring Do story. I think with just the, how the fandoms evolved and how everybody kind of has their own takes, like Vinyl Scratch, mm-hmm. she was on season one for a total of. What, three, three seconds? seconds? Three. And it just exploded into this huge thing where she's like this crazy yep. DJ that shoots laser beams out of her eyes and can do anything. Yep. And so now they teamed up with Octavia's roommates, but I don't I don't believe in the whole shipping thing. I just no, think that they're... They're just roommates. I think it's kind of one of those... It's, it's the odd like, couple roommates thing. It's like the odd couple. It's like the odd couple. Yes. And, I mean, so much has been done with her. I mean, with a comic thing like this, or mm-hmm. even with some of the fan stuff, you could just do mm-hmm. a one-off episode and I think I guess I'm not Hasbro and I know that Hasbro itself they are they probably have marketing people to do whatever they want but I feel that I mean with just the way the community is Mm -hmm. if somebody were to make uh, like let's say in theory my group did a a one off daring do episode and threw some different stuff in Mm -hmm. I mean that's something that theoretically they could mark it off as a standalone. I well, mean, actually, look at what's uh, going on with Sonic Green Boom. Right? This guy is doing his final thesis in animation. He goes to Hasbro and says, I want to do an, ep- an episode. And they say, yeah, go ahead. Just get us a, a, get us a script. Rainbow. A double rainbow, excuse me. Double no, rainbow. I'm actually part of that group. Are you? Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm the lead sound designer. Awesome. But, uh, 
Yeah, I work with Zach, but it's it's not Zach's final thesis. It's his first. Oh, it's final. his first that, final. That's one that he wants to do for ponies, and uh-huh. then he's actually going to do a more original project afterwards. Oh, gotcha. But yeah, I mean, um, the whole thing behind that is just you know, you message Hasbro saying I'm doing this for my school, and mm-hmm. it, it just kind of panned out. I mean, they're not they're not getting a deal from it. No. In fact, they're specifically not allowed to get a deal from it. Yeah, absolutely. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I can. I, but, yeah, I know what you mean. Um. I mean, they have he's, to re- they have to release he's, he's all the guy. yeah they have to release all the models they have to release everything to everybody right they can't just hold that yeah. stuff so that's part of part of what Hasbro said is well, like as long as I don't you know if they have to release everything oh, but okay. they they can't they can't sell anything they can't sell it. But they I mean, can't make that, money that's that's kind of a given for everybody unless it's original stuff but you can't just take a picture of Rainbow Dash and slap it on a shirt and yeah, then say, and, and, say oh! yeah. and sell it because mm-hmm. that. That ain't no good. That ain't now, good. Now, if you made some kind of, like, you know, uh, some kind of different interpretation of Rainbow Dash. Applejack Daniels. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, or, I still gotta like, get Picasso that Rainbow Dash. Yeah. Yeah. Then I think it's it's a little bit more... It's parody. ...to interpretation. Then you're parody. Yeah, it's parody. And that's parody, and then you're, you're pretty much safe. But you can't just take a vector out of the show and go slap and make money off it. You can't do that. I know some people that did that on Spreadshirt. And uh, actually, I, you know, yeah. we, we sell shirts and I talk with Spreadshirt Legal about our stuff, so mm-hmm. I know that the stuff we have is legitimate, but right. I talk to them about some of the other shirts I've seen on Spreadshirt. Some some people actually literally take screen caps from yeah. YouTube and, and put it on a put shirt. On shirt yeah. And I was telling them about, like, you know, hey, you know, if we're allowed to do this, what about these other people that are doing this? And like, oh, no, they're not allowed to do that. That's, that's you know, that's mm-hmm. something that's going to come and come back to him and bite him bite him in the freaking flank it'll not be good absolutely (sighs) so oh yeah that's that's another thing Uh, San Diego Comic Con so the first day of San Diego Comic Con they you see the picture of uh, what everything Hasbro is selling all special San Diego Comic Con toys that they made for everybody Transformers and all this other stuff this big list it's like in stock in stock in stock in stock in stock My Little Pony forget you in stock, in stock, in stock. This is my little pony gone. Gone. First, first day, Derpy is gone within an Probably hour. Probably first gone. four hours, Derpy is gone. Gone. So I actually had somebody. I had I had a friend of mine who was going to San Diego. I said, "Dude, you gotta you gotta help me. You gotta help me. You gotta get me a pony." Oh, so, was it John? Because I know John nope, snatched nope, like nope. six of them. No, John, yeah, I, he puts a picture up on, t- on Twitter. He's got six freaking Derpies. I was like, I hate you. But no, he it wasn't John. Box hidden inside of his room. Yeah, it wasn't John. It was another friend of mine, and he says. Dude, I didn't even get in line to get a ticket to get in line to buy a derpy. It's like what? <laughs> so I'm I'm checking Twitter. I'm all despondent. I didn't get my derpy. Despondent. And the next day, a friend of mine is twittering. He's like, "In line in Hasbro Toy Star." It's like I Twitter right back. Can I give you bits? Can I can I give you bits? And she says, "Oh, don't worry. I got you covered." So she got me. A, I have a derpy on the way. Yay! Absolutely. And then I actually that is awesome. I pre-ordered I pre-ordered Zakora because the minute they went went up on ToysRUs.com, I pre-ordered Zakora too. So I got them both. So that's that's gonna be awesome. I can't wait to get Derpy here so I can show all of you Derpy. Yeah. Uh, honestly, the only merchandise I think I ever gotten was this. It was some stuff from BronyCon where yeah. I think it was Egophiliac was yeah. selling these sweet vinyl scratch stickers. And actually, I yes, she bag. was. Yeah. That thing was sweet. But um, she was man. she was actually selling science Wuna uh, jackets. I think lab coats. I think I vaguely remember those. Yes, they were gone Very in like vague. ten minutes. Gone. Yeah, I I, yeah. I think I saw them like once, but they yeah. were gone. Yeah. And I I walked in there. Uh, Mighty Fine had their their shirt thing there. I talked to the guy the first day. Right. He had like stacks yeah. of shirts. Next day, gone. Gone. No, they were he gone. Had, like, by, dude, shirts, they were gone they by were five gone. o'clock. No, he didn't have. No, they he didn't were, have five hundred. They brought, let's see, with 4,000 people, they brought a shirt and a half per person. They brought 6,000 shirts. Okay. They were just gone. Gone. I was like, what? By Did five somebody o'clock. mug you? Gone. What happened? Did the fire, like, just incinerate well, them all? The, the thing was, he had, <laughs> the it was just one guy. He had such a crowd that he was, like, grabbing friends from other booths to come over. And it's like, who was it? It was Karen. Karen Padella from Equestria LA was there selling shirts, and and oh yeah, I remember she was She's there selling shirts, and then you know somebody else was there selling selling shirts for him. It was like it was fast as he could freaking get the money in. They were gone. 
I think the, se- the second day, the second day, all he had was the the con special shirt, which is the black yeah, one with all the heads on it. Yeah, he had like a whole stack. He had a stack of those, of those and that was, was it. That like, was gone. I was like, well, I guess we figured out what's the least. I actually, you know what? I actually ordered, I ordered the cider shirt, the the, the new Sweet Apple Acre cider shirt, and I bought I, I bought a derpy bag. I, I ordered it during the twenty five percent off sale a couple days ago. Yeah, same. Uh, it's I due. Get the it's bag due bag. today. It's due today. Oh. It's I've been checking UPS.com, and it's on the truck for delivery. And it's now 5.30 p.m., which means it could be here anytime. Anytime. Any, any minute. Any minute now. So I'm like, okay. Stay out there like a hawk. Standing out there like a hawk. But I'm here entertaining all of you and talking with Bobby. Talking with Bobby. And so we are half an hour into the show, and it's commercial time. For those people that I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for that package to arrive. But right now, it's time for commercial. Stick around, be right back, and all of you out there will be able to ask us questions. We'll get Screwball in the chat, and we're going to have some fun, so hang tight. It's harvest season here at Sweet Apple Acres, and the You Pick Apple adventures have begun. You can make the most of this opportunity by getting a bushel full of the plumpest, juiciest apples this side of the Everfree Forest. Whether for a homemade apple pie, delicious apple fritters, or fresh off the tree, it all begins with a visit to Sweet Apple Acres Apple Orchard. Go visit with the Apple family, a short trot southwest of Ponyville. Applejack. Well, how to do? Granny Smith. <laughs> Apple Bloom. I want it now! And Big Macintosh. Hey, yep. We'll treat you like one of the family. Fresh apple cider? Try our ten varieties. Apple pies and dumplings? Mouth water. <laughs> yeah. Sweet red delicious apples? They got them. Tart Granny Smith apples? You'll find them there too. No ladders needed. Just rear up and buck you some of the sweet apple goodness that graces the plates of our princesses Celestia and Luna. And remember, our apple stand can be found at the corner of Appleton Road, right near Quills and Sofas. Apple cider donuts, fresh apple butter, and apple juice. It's always a family adventure at Sweet Apple Acres. Would you look at them fancy duds you can get from our friends at WeLoveFine.com? Shoo! Hats! bags and posters too they got everything you could ever want except apples of course so mosey on down to welovefine.com and rustle you up some sweet apple acres sunday best yee-haw and we're back yes we are and all you ponies who are watching I know at least Twilight Sparkle and Princess Luna come every week to watch this show I know they do. And I know, you know, Twilight Sparkle goes down to Sweet Apple Lakers once a week. I know she does. But Princess Luna, you know, you need to go down there because they need your princessly support. They, they need it down there. So that more ponies from all over Equestria will go down and buy their apples. Do it. I'm telling you. But all you humans, you need to go to WeLoveFind.com. But not when they have a 25% off sale because you can't get through. But at any other time, <laughs> you need to go to WeLoveFind.com. And use our code EFR10 to get 10% off your entire order over at WeLoveFine.com. And we're back with Robbie Bobby, the man behind the Epic Time cartoons. The big man, the big cheese, the boss. Yes. Bobby. Yes. Are you ready for the onslaught? That I'm is. always ready. I'm always, you're always ready. Nobody draw until it hits the ground. <laughs> I know um, your uh, your bleh, I guess your sidekick Screwball always asks me. If, oh yeah. Always uh, asks me if I always ask for something, and I always say I never asked for this. I never asked for this. <laughs> you, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I'm gonna stop that? right here. I'm gonna stop right here before we go into before we go into anything else. Okay. I got something to say, and I have to congratulate my parents on yesterday reaching their 45th wedding anniversary. Awesome. Yesterday. Celebrate. And this picture that I just put up there of Shining Armor and Princess Cadence for my parents. I know my mom watches and hopefully dad's watching too. And I love you both and congratulations on your 45th wedding anniversary. Now, let's do a little math. Their wedding anniversary is in July. 45 years. 
I was born in April of the next year. Mm-hmm. But there you go. <laughs> I love you. I love you. So, that was for my parents. And also, I want to call out for my nephew, Jay Bird, whose birthday is also last weekend, and to my best friend, Tor, whose birthday was also last weekend. So, I might have to start, like, a birthday call out you know, for everybody. So, we are here with Screwball, hey. who's now here in the chat with Robbie, Bobby, and myself. And we need some questions. questions. Oh, man. It's got been a post Come ahead of time. Come at me, bro. Come at me, bro. <laughs> Come at me. Okay. This one's a good one. I like this one. Um, this one's from Dottie the Chef. And the question is, who will be doing the voice of Uncle? Um, uh, Rev897. Um, he was our Discord in Epic Wub Time, and I've been working with him on it. We actually still have to tweak it a little bit more, but he can do a fairly good, impressive uncle. It's not spot on, but it's close enough. And I think people will really like that when it comes to time, because I know that I myself definitely push for authenticity when it comes to voices. And I've been working with Rev on it for a bit, and he's pretty good. Cool. Awesome. <sighs> Yeah. Oh. Is that a pine cone? Yeah. What, this? What? Yeah. It is, as a matter of fact. Gotta get That's... that fiber. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Trixie taught me how. Oh. Oh, why'd you bring that off? Now it makes me sad because I. Uh, never mind. <laughs> Uh, Next! <laughs> this one's ca from Chaotic Harmony. He always brings in the the questions. A uh, question for both. If you were, if you were about to die and had one hour to live, would you go to Equestria or remain on Earth with your family? Ooh. Ooh. Well, if I wanted to live, I'd probably go to my family and shout, There's no time! And go and do something really heroic. I, I would... a bunch of bad guys and headbutt them. I would <laughs> split the time. I would run to my family for half an hour and then go, I go see my friends, and gone. I'd be gone for half an hour. I'd die in a quest group. <laughs> That's it. Hey, Mom, I love you, K. Bye. I love you, Mom, K. Bye. <laughs> Shung, gone. I love you, Mom. Yes. Yes, I probably would. Now I wouldn't do that. I'd spend it with my family, and everybody knows that. What if it took you 58 minutes to get there, so you're like, hey, for, ah, and you just fell over. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Aneurysm. Aneurysm. Pretty much. <laughs> um, this one's from Brecky. Question is, Dusty, why are you eating a pine cone? Because it's tasty. <laughs> are you kidding me? These are awesome. <laughs> they taste like almonds. How do you eat a pine cone? Yeah. I thought. I is thought they're crunchy? Like, crunchy? Yeah, I thought they're really hard to eat. It's crunchy. Or they taste really bad. Crunchy. Mm-hmm. Oh. This is how we do stuff in San Jose. Wilderness training. Damn, it's great. Made for these days. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, this one's from uh, Iron Raptor. Question for Rob Bob. What other crossovers are in store do you think they might oh. go for? Uh, oh. I think oh. we're only going to have the one crossover, oh. Oh. but I, when I, we do... Oh. I hear something. I think I hear... A UPS truck! Ah! And there he goes. You... Okay. Off to fight the good fight. So, Rob, how are you doing? <laughs> doing all right. All right, yeah, to answer your question, I think we're only going to do one crossover. The thing behind our uh, animations is I like to mix things up. So, um, for the next one, which will probably be our final one, I'm not going to say it's our final one, but it might be, I think... I think it's going to be something nobody would expect, but I'm hoping to impress you. <laughs> I've got a box. What has he done? Oh, no, I know it is. <laughs> I can't hear any of you because my earphones are off. I can't hear you. Oh, now I can hear you. 
I got the box it. open. Do it. Eat box. the box. <laughs> yeah. Yes. As much fiber as the pine cone. <laughs> Woo! I got the Luna. <laughs> oh. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Luna keychain. Woo! Look at that. Oh, Ooh. My. Oh my. What else we got in here? We got epic bag. Everybody gets the epic bag. Swag time. Swag Just time. Yes. Swag time. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. And we got. Ooh, look at that sweet apple acres cider shirt. Look at that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yes. Oh my. Now the only the only thing the only thing is bad about this is they did not have red shirts and three X. That's the only thing I'm oh, sad about. That's a shame. I had to get the cream. I got it. Uh, and then woo -hoo -hoo, we got the derpy bag. <laughs> oh, I've been wanting this for a while. And I got the I got the buttons that go with it. Mm mm mm. Yes. I got the bubbles, the jelly. bubbles in the muffin. Jelly. Be jelly because this thing is awesome. Woo! Look at that. Oh, it's got the wheel of fine in the back. It's got the strap. Look at that. And it's got heavy duty canvas. Oh, now I gotta now I gotta buy a laptop. It's got an inside pocket too. Look at that. It's got a little inside pocket. That's cool. Yes! I've been waiting for this thing for a while. Finally got the money. Finally had the 25% off sale. It's like, yes, it's mine. Yes. Oh. Printing's really nice too. Look at that. So anyway, that's the swag bag. Swag for the week. Yes. Awesome. Sorry I interrupted everybody. What were you talking about now? <laughs> we, we, we answered it, so... <laughs> I'm, I'm lost. <laughs> okay, I'll just find a question as soon as I can. Okay, I got one here. Um, <laughs> this one's for you, Dusty. Your manly box eating. <laughs> Yeah, you're taking in a lot of fiber. Wow! <laughs> look, at, look at this thing. That's awesome. <laughs> wow. And the thing is, I didn't even, like, I just asked them because I only ordered two things, right? You only get this thing if you order five My Little Pony things, right? So it's like I just said, can I um, please have this, please? And they sent one. That's how nice they are. That is, that is amazing. That, that looks is, really sweet. That is really sweet. Okay, question for me. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> question for you, Dusty, is uh, where are, oh, damn it. Uh, what are your revenge, uh, revenge plans for Solrak after he slapped a sticker on your head at BronyCon? Oh! <laughs> I can't say. Mm -mm. For it would not be revenge because it no. needs to be... I can't say. Because then you would tip him off, you see. <laughs> and, see, I, I know, I know where he lives. Because I got this in the mail from one Mr. Solrak. Nice. Which means I got an envelope with a return address on it. So I happen to know where you live, Mr. Solrak. <laughs> so you better be watching out your window. Watch out your window because you never know what day it's going to be that I'm in L.A. You'll never know when it's coming. Never. Next. Uh, this one is from MLP Problems uh, via Twitter. Question is, what, uh, for Rob, question is, what is your favorite episode? I think that was a reaction, but I guess yes. we could just do a recap. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my favorite episode is Party One. Yeah. And for season two, my favorite episode would probably be... Um, oh man, I can't remember the name of it. It's with um, the donkey. Oh, friend indeed. A, a friend indeed. Yep, that's a friend it. indeed. Friend indeed. That was sweet. I love that episode. It was I didn't. I didn't have to get out my knife. <laughs> Too excited. Uh, this one's from Chaotic Harmony. Question for Rob: If you could use one of the VAs from the show, who would you use and why? Oh, man, that's a tough one. Um, 
I guess if I had to use any of the VAs in the show for for like for something MLB related or for anything. Um, I guess anything for your show, like whatever you come up with next. It'd probably be Tara because she seems to have a nice sense of humor and she's really talented. Oh. But if Tara was busy, it would definitely be Tabitha because she has just a simply amazing range. <sighs> yep. Yep. But they're all great. Yep. Ah, uh, this question's from uh, Ky uh, 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 Kyred. I hope I said that right. Uh, the uh, the question is, um, what was one uh, for all of us? Uh, what was one of your favorite animated shows growing up? Ooh, <laughs> me or Dusty? All of oh, us. Yeah. Oh man, that's that's rough. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I guess it depends what age I was at the time. Um, when I was a kid, I know back when Toonami was on, my t t I guess I was more of a Toonami person, and I have to say my favorite show, looking back at it, the voice acting was a bit meh, but back in the day I loved it. It was Tenchi Muyo. That show, uh, I loved that show so much. Me, um, I my favorite shows were made before any of you were born. Oh no! Yeah, um, when I was growing up, it was uh, Kim of the White Lion, which was Jungle Emperor out of Japan in '63, four, before it was brought over. Um, and then there was Science Ninja Team Gatchaman, which was the early '70s, and then was redubbed into Battle of the Planets in '76, '77. Um, and then uh, later, when you get into the '80s and the '90s, you got uh, Thunder of the Barbarian. Um, which was a, a Saturday morning cartoon uh, back in the 80s. And then uh, Devlin, which actually uh, had uh, Mickey Dolenz, who was the drummer for the Monkees, actually voiced a character on that show. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Devlin was actually a uh, the story of a uh, carnival motorcycle jump guy who would go from, from place to place, you know, helping people. You know, at, he still had to make his jumps every show, but he ended up helping whoever was in the town that they ended up being at, which was kind of cool because they actually did uh, Mickey Dolan's character was actually the mechanic, who was the brother of the guy who jumped Devlin, and uh, they they went around in a van with his sister. You know, the, they were a family, and uh, they actually talked about bikes and fixing a carburetor and actually working on the motorcycle and all that kind of stuff. So as a little kid who was a bike freak, that was like awesome. So yeah, that was like. Probably my favorite favorite out of all the shows. Uh, so yeah, but mostly you kids probably have never heard any of these. So at all, I'm old. Original Transformers. Oh. Uh, original Robotech. School show. Ah oh, man, that Robotech. was like Robotech. Uh, uh, I don't was know. It, was I the, guess the Zanati or the Zandrati? I can't remember. The, uh, the Zan Zanati. Zandrati, I think. Zandrati. Was, that's it. The giant. Uh, I can't remember. It's, a, it's probably the Zentradi. Yes. Yeah, if somebody out there knows, Zentradi. let us know. Zentradi. Thank you. Yeah, Zentradi. Zentradi, yes. Big giant dudes. Big They're giant like, hey, dudes. Yeah. What's up, guys? And you're like, hey, uh, we have inferior weapons, but do you like songs? Do you and like songs? Like, oh my god, I love this song. And they start freaking out. Freaking out. Yep. If you know how to party hard, you can make friends with any invading alien species. <laughs> My favorite cartoon was Looney Tunes, Snuff said. Oh, yeah, but that's a given. Yeah, that is a given. That's a given. Putting Looney Tunes and Disney in there is like, okay, everyone loves that. So, yeah. Lo Looney Tunes and Disney is like, everyone loves, anybody who loves animation loves Looney Tunes and Disney. So, it's like, take those off the table, what else? So. Ah. Uh, this question is from Alan Taylor on Twitter. A uh, question for Rob Bob. Who is your favorite Brony musician? Ooh. Uh, I guess I should probably... I'm pretty biased on that, because I know a bunch of them that I'm really good friends with. Um, Music-wise, I guess RGV. Oh, yeah. But Mando Pony is a really good friend of mine, so is Tomb and Makan. Mm. And they all, they all make just brilliant music. 
That they do. Sure. Mando, Mando makes, Mando make has like sensors hooked up to his head, and then that, that hooks up to his computer so that he can actually make songs in his sleep. It has to be that way because he has released five songs this week. I swear, five songs, at least. I think I'm wrong, but if, if anybody else got that? I mean, he's, he's released like a song a day for a week. How does you do? How do you do that? On top of being different types of songs, and very then, dedicated, and then working with Michelle Kreber on Saturday Night Songs and doing music with her, and who knows what else he's doing in Vancouver? Woo! That boy doesn't sleep. I mean, he sleeps two hours a day, and then he he hooks all these monitors up to his brain so that his brain can actually make music while he sleeps. He's a robot. <laughs> it's not Sweetie. It's not Sweetie Bot. It's Mandobot. I'm calling yeah. it right here, Mandobot. Mm -hmm. the, this question is from uh, Godson. Uh, question for Dusty: If you saw your OC on the show, how do you react? Um, I would run around my house screaming like a little schoolgirl. <laughs> I would. I'd be going. Aah! Yeah. <laughs> yes, I would. Because that would be so awesome. But it's never gonna happen. You know, it's never gonna happen. I don't expect it. Don't, you don't never know. Never, never know, but it's not gonna. Pay sips you off. You know, if I become like a background character in, say, Alligator in the Tub production, something or other, that would be cool. But you no, know, I'm not expecting it. And oh my! Hmm. If if we ever made an animation about you, Dusty, it involves you using superpowers with your mustache and yes. like going around the country to fight crime. I would be like the Ghost Rider, except my my mustache would be on flame. Yeah, like your mustache, your mustache would I see be it. like you Yosemite see Sam, would it be like whips. Yeah, whack, whack. I can see it now. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> this one is from Inkbot. Question for Rob: uh, You mentioned Wok Fu. What is your favorite character in episode? Uh, actually, the sad thing is, I only know of Wakfu because I was a big fan of the uh, artist who worked for the game Wakfu, who then had the show based off of him. So oh, wow. I've I've only seen like the first episode, and the English dub was like the the main red haired guy. His his dub was just awfully sounded like a complete idiot. Is that sort of like, like sort of, let's go guys? Sort of like no, the English so sort of like the English dub of Akira. Which was horrible. Uh, yeah, like the first English dub of Akira. Yeah, the first English terrible. dub of Akira. The second oh, one, my with, goodness. First, the other one, Johnny Young Bosch, was all right. Yeah. But the first English dub of Akira was. I felt really awkward because one time I was like, you know, hey, Dad, we should watch this one anime I hear. It's like, uh, it, I, I didn't really watch it that much. So <laughs> I was like, hey, we should check this out. It's known for being like some kind of big pinnacle in animation. And I'm listening to it. I'm like, oh my God, this is terrible. Yeah, I mean the animation is brilliant. Brilliant, but yeah, the, the dubbing was just terrible. terrible. So then we quickly switched over to Mystery Science Theater Three Thousand. <laughs> oh, I love that show. Yep. If you ever want to see, Pe uh, people like, send think, me. Yeah, people send me copies of all the motorcycle that, movies that they did. You, you just have like a whole bunch of them, just kind of. Yeah, I have like four VHS tapes of MST Three K where they did the motorcycle movies. I also have Mano's Hands of Fate. Course. Everyone has Man Hands of Fate. That's I give you props for actually owning that movie. Oh yeah, it's a terrible movie, but I give Ter you props for owning it. I get the MST3K version of Manos. Hands of Fate. Mm -hmm. This one. <laughs> <laughs> this one is from uh, Bricky uh, one four nine. Question for Dusty. What What does the doctor recommend for fiber intake? <laughs> Two pine cones a week, and <laughs> steel cut oats in the morning. Oh. It, it, bring, it brings your brings your cholesterol down at least hundred points. And when you're my age, when you're my age, you have to start thinking about your cholesterol points. You do, but sadly, you do. So that's why that's why we have pine cones. This one is from Star Stream. Question for Rob. Oop. Uh, how long does it take to write an episode? Um, 
to write the episode. So actually, I'm I'm answering this question right now in private chat. But um, usually, to write an episode, it takes one to two weeks. The writing's the easy part. Usually, the way it works is a majority of the ideas that we do do like um, the stuff in Epic Web Time, the base cannon, uh, the part with the sandwich where she's crying, all the major kind of puns. Those were all of my ideas. Um, the vinyl smashing the mug in her face. That was um, no acting's idea. And for the most part, usually what I do is I have these ideas, we kind of write out an outline, and then I throw ideas back and forth, and I kind of work with people when I write out the next script for things. So usually one to two weeks, um, depending on you know if family stuff comes up or not. For the animation, that takes a little bit longer because it depends on if we do storyboards or not. I find that if we do storyboards, we're able to get a lot more detailed shots, which take longer to animate, but in the long run are definitely worth it, instead of just doing the audio only and then kind of just wing it. But I mean, Evan's a really talented animator. I can't, I cannot express how talented he is. I mean, he pumped out Epic Pie Time in like a week. Yeesh. It was ridiculous. That's crazy. It's crazy good. Crazy good! Yeah. Uh... Sorry, I'm just going through my questions right here. There is a lot, I'll tell you that. It's well, good. constant chimes. <laughs> I mean, we have a very, very interesting guest that people want to talk to. Hell yeah. Uh, question is for all you guys. Uh, do you have a favorite fanon character like Sweetie Bot or Gamer Luna? Mm. This one from Dawn Spice, by the way. What, can, what do you consider a fanon character? Is yeah. that a character that the fans have named, or is that a character from a parody? Like, you know, Sweetie Bot would be from um, Epic Friendship Witchcraft. Witchcraft. I guess something maybe that the fandom has come has made popular, I guess you could say. So, um, or has, count? I guess, sure. Because then, Cause Gamer yes, Luna, well, Then again, Gamer Luna is really like uh, uh, show same, it's it's sort of like someone has made the, her own personality out of that. But. Oh yeah, it's like all the Tumblr ponies. Yeah. Yeah. So basically all these Tumblr ponies that are out there that, that are on the, the adult side or the weird side. And Princess you, Molestia. Princess Molestia, you know, Gamer Luna, um, uh, the rarity character, or, you know, um, all the Ask logs that are out there. Um, I, I watch a lot of them uh, to see what's going on, to keep up with what's going on. Um, I read uh, Princess Molestia. I've been in Princess Molestia. I, I was in it. So my, my OC was actually uh, in the, the Super Bowl, um, the Super Bowl thing that she did. Um, but I like almost all of it. It's almost hard to, it's almost hard to pick one. You know, it's, it's kind of like picking a favorite child. You know, you have a lot of people doing really great stuff. And you don't want to pick... You know, one over the other because they're all doing really great things. I mean, uh, and they're all doing something just a slightly different. You know, everybody who does, everybody who's an artist does things slightly different. They bring different things to the table. Like um, people who are doing animations that aren't Rob Bob or or Alligator in the Tub Productions, they're doing it a little different than they are. And and not to say that it's any worse or any better. It's just different. Um, uh, and it's all pretty damn good. Excuse my French, but uh, it's kind of hard to pick one. Because it's it's all pretty pretty fun, you know, as to what's going on. As long as somebody's being creative and putting their heart into it, you know, it, it, it's really hard to tell them that they're worse than somebody else. So, that's the way I see it. I think, I mean, I I've, I've seen a lot of animators. Like uh, I talk with uh, Ask the Crusaders a lot. He's from Ida, he's from Italy. He was actually on our animation panel. And, right. You know, he I he has the closest to show animation that I've seen from anybody mm -hmm. ever. Yep. And he puts a lot of you know effort into it, but um, he he tends to keep his stuff light and close to the show. And he's also been mm -hmm. doing that stuff from uh, some kind of Tumblr thing called the Ask the Kitty Mark oh, Crusaders. Yeah, you know, he does that, but it's the vocational some kind of vocational cruise, vocational death cruise. Oh yeah, vocational death, death cruise. Which has, I, I no the Crusaders are on it right now. It's sort it's sort of like you know the doctor. Yeah, he's been doing that. 
the Doctor and the Crusaders are on this this death cruise that you know has a whole bunch of portals in it, and the the Crusaders have have all of their you know, Scootaloo's the unicorn now, and and Sweetie Belt was the the Earth Pony, and and Apple Bloom is the the Pegasus, and trying to figure out what the heck is going on. <laughs> so it's, uh, it, that one has just gone off into left field. I'm trying trying to follow it, and I'm going just the heck. <laughs> What is going on here? So. The, one, the, one, the, one guy, the one guy I want to call out is Memoirs of a Reality Jumper. You have an update in a couple of weeks, and I'm starting to get the shakes. You know, I love that. I love that fanfic. And I'm waiting for <laughs> Stargate Equestria. It's been a year, and I'm still waiting. Yeah. Wow. He, he keeps saying he's going to update it, yep. and I'm still waiting because that was really good. Mm-hmm. But uh, another one I really like is uh, the God Particle. Yes, that's a that's good. A, that just that, updated. That's it. Just yeah, updated, and uh, I haven't read the latest chapter yet. Did you actually read through that? I have read through most of it. I really like that story. Yeah. I think it's really sweet. Yep. Uh, this one's from uh, MLP Problems on Twitter. Question is. Uh, who is your favorite music artist? Uh, I'll probably say outside the fandom. Oh, outside the fandom? Oof. Yeah. Very difficult for me because I'm so old. I like so many <laughs> different types of music that it's hard to pick one out of all of them. Um, That's true. It's really hard. I mean, um, I go anywhere from Jim Croce to Aerosmith, you know, from Metallica to Pantera. Um, so it, it's it's difficult for me to pick one. Just it's you know everything from I, I, it depends on the mood it depends on the mood I'm in you know if I'm I'm in the mood to sit back and read a daring do novel I don't want to put on Pantera I'll put on you know Indiana uh, Jones but yeah I'll put on some Indiana Jones or I'll put on uh, I'll put on some sure. 70s singer songwriters right you know a whole CD mm -hmm. of it um, if I'm drawing I actually put on my 50th anniversary Jim Croce two CD set which is like three hours of Jim Croce. And I just go into my headphones and go away. Um, or if I'm really feeling like rocking out, then I I pull out my Metallica disc. But it just depends. Rob, that's your turn. Oh, uh, man, that's a tough one. I guess in terms of music, I'm I'm a big fan of the Who because my father was. Yes. But um, in terms of actual like just music that I like, I cover a whole wide range of stuff. I literally like. Orchestral from video games like you know Marty O'Donnell from Halo did an amazing job. Yes. Uh, Hans Zimmer does an amazing job in yes. everything he works on. Yes, yes, and yes. Hans Zimmer, um, a lot of electro like uh, this song I just listened to. Zed's um, this guy named Zed. He made a song called Spectrum. That's really good. Mm. Um, uh, the soundtrack to Uncharted, really good. Yes. I guess it's in terms of just genres of music I'd have to say I'm a big fan of electro rock and roll and orchestral uh, I'm a huge orchestral fan like to such an extent I like listening to Hans Zimmer James Horner uh, Two Steps from Hell and then when it comes to what artists mostly know I'm a huge Billy Joel fan and Elton John I'm oh yeah the, everybody knows I'm an Elton John fan because I've done three of his songs Oh my I've got God, three more man. written, people. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, by the way, Final Draft has just entered the room, and uh -oh. he's screaming at me. I'm not screaming. I'm just. I'm just then, trying to. Then get stop your talking in all caps, sucker. Well, you know what? That gets your attention. <laughs> That's screaming Look, on the internet. First of all, we understand that Luna is best. Well, not best pony, but my favorite pony. Right there, and, baby. And Luna is hold best. All right, hold on, Draft. Alicorn, just a right there. I thought you keep <clears throat> saying Twilight Sparkle's best pony. Yeah. No, no, no. Twilight, okay, okay. Let me, let me establish something. Twilight Sparkle, I learned, is best pony. However, however, after BronyCon, mm -hmm. after I bought tons of Luna merch, I came to a realization that Luna is my favorite. There you go. See? But, then, 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 you Sparkle know what? Is best what pony. Is this? I've got this draft, and you can't have it. <laughs> oh, I got something better for you. Ooh, what? What do you got? You okay, got? you guys ready for this? I'm ready. My body is ready. All right, I want I want to know if the IRC chat is ready. For My this, body. I don't know if the dusty. Is I, ready. I have to open up the window so I can see you live. For this. Here I am. Oh, hold on, I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna make sure that you're playing live. You know live. what? Right here, shirts open. Hit me with your best shot. Hit me. I don't know. Hold on. <laughs> Bring hold on, it, Billy. Bring it. You ready for this? Bring it. Okay, everybody. 
I am proud to announce that as of just a moment ago, <clears throat> I just confirmed with Everfree Northwest that Mr. Dusty Cat here will be hosting the Guys of MLP panel featuring Lee Tokar, Peter New, and Kathy Westlock. What? God. <laughs> what? That's that. I was going to say you need to get yep. Kathy in there because she voices Spike. <laughs> yeah, Kathy's going to be in there. That was great when we found out. Ah, do it. You have to do it. Oh my goodness. So, yes. You need, to have, you need to have her just do a Spike oh. voice and just be like, yeah, I'm surrounded by a bunch of guys. Manly. It's nice it's, being part of the pack. This is going to be the manliest, the manliest VA panel ever. Let me yeah. tell you something. When we were talking about this, too, we were trying to figure out the different panels, and I saw the guys of MLP, and I thought, yeah. Mm -hmm. Manliest brony belongs up on stage there. <sighs> so, I just confirmed it with Bajati, the show director of Everfree Northwest. Very capable man, very busy man. And also uh, Royal Coat, who is their events coordinator, who is... Uh, <laughs> Who is also again just an amazing amazing uh coordinator honestly like he's playing tetris right now with the schedules and making everything fit in all the rooms <laughs> yeah. i'm really looking forward to this convention i know dusty is now oh, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> i had to play it live so i could see his face but yeah mm. no, we just confirmed that man i am so excited <laughs> so excited. I, I i didn't see the chat though i wasn't in the chat did the chat like it Oh, they're, they're. I if I scroll oh, up about five oh pages, my. they're all like, "Oh my god!" Oh, oh my. it gets better. It gets better. Oh, does it? That panel, along with all other panels that of note at at uh, Everfree Northwest. I almost said BronyCon because it's been BronyCon all month. Um, <laughs> all other panels of note at Everfree Northwest, the Northwest premiere, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic convention will be live streamed by Everfree Radio. Which means that all of you lovely viewers who aren't able to make it to Seattle get to see this guy with the mustache here freaking talk to Peter New, Lee Tokar, and Kathy Westluck. How awesome is that? How awesome is that? Who has two thumbs and is really freaking jazzed right now? This guy! <laughs> this guy! Now, I know that you wanted to get them on your show, Dusty, but th yes. this was as good as I could do. I hope it's okay. This is awesome. This is awesome. <laughs> it, just, all right. it just means we need to figure out we need to figure out what to do with my show on Saturday night, but Man, we'll figure it out really later. Wish. Now, get oh, the no, hell off my show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a trucks trying to get me off your show. Anyway, how are you? Bye, bye, everyone. Okay, there you go. Bye-bye. Thank you. Ah, <laughs> uh, man, I really want to go to Everfree Northwest so Oot. badly. I just wish I had the money. I just, you know, I just pulled a Stone Cold Steve Austin and told my boss to get the hell off my show. <laughs> feeling the, oh, feeling no. the power tonight. <laughs> You're getting, you're getting power hungry, Jesus. Lift weights to make money. Yes! So, let's go back. Let's go back to what we're doing before I, like, start vibrating again. So. Uh, questions! Questions for the Bobby. Sorry, my RC legged for a second, so I'm just recollecting my thoughts. Yes. Uh, this one's from Imperius. Mm. Um, up is for both you guys. If given the chance, would you lend your voice to an animated pony feature, fan made or otherwise? Any minute. If if Bobby theoretically, can, I've already done th it. Yeah, he's already done it. You know, but if, <laughs> exactly. if, if, if Bobby, you want to do it again? If Bobby would come to me and say, "Dusty, we're doing a pony version of the good, the bad, and the ugly, and we want you to be the pony with no name," I would be there in a heartbeat. Be so awesome. <laughs> yes, if, if if anybody asked me to do a voice. In fact, people have asked me to do voices, and I've done it. Um, when I have the time and when I have the motivation, I do it. Um, anybody asked me, I would do it. I would do it. My, I do it to my best of my ability, and be on with it. It would be awesome. It would be fun. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I like this one. Uh, this is from Eternal Pony. Question for all. If a portal to Equestria existed but costed 100000 to go through, would you go? There's only one answer to that is yes, because you could just take out a loan, 100000 yeah. go through the portal, go the portal never and back. never go back. Done. Yep. The yep. government can look all over for you. you won't, they won't be able to find you. Mm -hmm. Done deal. It's a simple, Easy answer. Yes. Yes. <laughs> 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 Oh, 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 
Um, <laughs> I went crazy there. Um, uh, this is from Cowboy Dave. First off, congratulations on the announcement of the Manly panel. <laughs> With that an announcement, who are you looking forward to the most of Everfree Northwest? What, what am I looking forward to the most? My, yeah. my panel. Are you kidding me? <laughs> now I'm like, I gotta like prepare. And it's like, oh my goodness, what am I gonna say? What am I gonna do? Oh! This totally works too. Yes. This works so well because it's, you have Spike with a mustache. Yes. You have Steve Magnum with, with a mustache. mustache. You give Big Mac yeah, a mustache. mustache. You're done. And you have a mustache. Yes. The Mustache Brigade. It's, Come on. Oh, oh, dude, Rob, you just gave me Team the, stash. You just gave me the glimmer of an idea. The mustache squad. I love you. The stash. <laughs> you know, it's, like it's like the A team, but everybody has mustaches. Mm, I'm evil. Trust me. <laughs> the the cutie stash crusaders. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. It's clever. Oh. The stash team. I'm gonna go with the stash team. The stash like team. That. Yes. <laughs> Oh, I'm so looking forward to this. Oh my <laughs> good, I have to go buy my plane ticket tonight. <laughs> oh, wait, yeah, what? Yes. You haven't bought it. No, yet. I haven't bought it yet. I'm buying it tonight. Oh, so after the show, sauce, after man. the show, I'm buying my ticket. Yes. <laughs> Next. Hang on mm. one second, for the love of all that is holy. Um, all that is Celestia. Is from, all that is Celestia and Luna. Don't forget Luna. <laughs> um, uh, sorry. Um, this one's from Jordy Boothy. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, question for Justin Scree. What is your primary... Uh, I'll put this for you as well, Rob, because you need to talk more. <laughs> uh, question for all of us is, where is your primary talent, aside from being manly and adorable? <laughs> adorable? I, I don't know. Apparently, you're adorable. And I... <laughs> <It's awesome. laughs> Um, I'm a trained Harley Davidson mechanic. I can build Harley Davidsons from scratch. Um, I sell parts for Harley Davidsons. I can fix cars. I draw. I paint. I sing. Um, I can weld. I can run a laser. I can run a CNC machine. Um, and I'm a really good uncle to all of my nep nieces and nephews. Dude, do you, do you like have cutie pox? Because there's, that's a lot of key marks right there. Yeah, I do. I, I, you know what? If you if you go through the history of my work, I have the cutie pox because <laughs> I started out as a bus uh, as a golf bag caddy, moving up to a bus boy, dish dog, uh, back of the line prep cook, line cook, um, everything in a restaurant. Then I moved on to painting Lionel toy trains. Then I went to college. Then I came back and did. Let's see what else I did. I worked on a road crew. I did. Uh, I was a bodyguard. I did some art. Um, I I worked at. I, I was an RD guy. I built bikes for a living. I was a line mechanic for Harley Davidson dealerships. Um, I took CNC machine technology. Uh, I now sell parts for Harley Davidson's. I've built custom bikes. Yeah, it just goes on and on. I've done a lot of different things because, you know what? When you get to be 80 years old, just gliding in in good shape is not the way to do it. You want to slide in sideways, skidding, completely messed up because you want that to be one heck of a ride when you get there. I don't want to go. I don't want to go out gracefully. I want to be, make sure that I had one heck of a ride. To get to the end of my life. <sighs> uh, yep. What about you, Rob? Uh, what do I do? Well, um, I do not have the ex awesome experiences of life that Dusty has, but uh, I guess I do airsoft. Um, I'm hoping to move up to professional eventually when I actually have a job and get money. But uh, right now I'm just in college. I'm about to graduate this um, semester, actually. As for what I do, um, I make my friends laugh a lot, is apparently what I'm told. Uh, I do audio mixing, like ADR stuff. Um, and I just try to be a nice person. Yep. 
I'm. Uh, whenever I, I don't know, it's uh, I I do photography every now and again, but I wouldn't really consider it a profession. I do like weddings every now and again and all that other sort. Dude, so, dude if you've done I, one wedding as a photographer, you're a professional. I wouldn't wish that job <laughs> on anybody. So. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I guess that's my talent then is photography. Yay. Okay, feather like feather wing. <laughs> oh, you, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if, I is random is randomness a talent? Right. Ra- yeah. Because if that's the case, then Dude. I got that nailed. Yeah, you got that nailed. You got that nailed. You immediately get a cutie mark crusaders cape, <laughs> full of randomness. Is that just a stack of hats you have in the background? <laughs> yeah. That's my stack of hats. Because people kept saying, where are your hats, Dusty? Well, they're right there. I'm going to form my they're crat. Right I'm going to form all the hats I have into a crude person, and he'll be my co-host. <laughs> Actually, I need to go buy a new hat. So. Hat man, Jim. Hat man, Jim. Yeah, you got to cut the... Cut you need the some berets. A new hat. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not wearing a beret. beret. Where's, your, where's your military beret? I'm not wearing a beret. No. Come on, you Jamie. Get, no. Do it. No. Jamie Heineman, come on. You gotta get the beret. <laughs> and walk around. Just stare very seriously at people for hours at a time. No. No. I, I refuse. No berets. I'd, I'd feel too hip. I'd have to be in Seattle drinking coffee. You know? Too hipster for a beret. Um, this one is from Joshua Dunn on uh, Twitter, and the question is, what do you guys think of Mike the Microphone's Bronies for Good Raffle? Uh, the Bronies for Good Raffle with all the games that he came out with that he got uh, for free? Yeah. I think it's awesome. You know, he's taking he's taking a situation where, you know, he asked for something and it basically blew up on him um, and is making good out of it. Uh, I think that it's awesome that he's doing what he's doing. Um so I think it's really gonna gonna work with Bronies for good. I think he's really turning it around into something positive, and I, and I applaud him for it. Yeah, your thoughts, Rob? I definitely. Uh, well, I guess I've met Mike and worked with Mike a couple of times. He's a pretty good guy. I mean, I know back in the day, um, he was he was a different person, but he's definitely he's he's definitely lightened up, and I definitely respect what he's doing for charity. I know some other people who are also doing stuff for charity, and I respect mm-hmm. all of them. I think, I think doing stuff for charity is one of the big things this fandom definitely has going for it. I've never seen so many different drives to charity mm-hmm. in my life in one fandom. Mike, Mike is a young man. He he got famous very quickly, and it went to his head. He's he's said so himself, and he's had good friends around him who's pulled him back. And you know, I I think that this is one of the things that's going to help him in the future. Is, is going through this. So I, I applaud him, and I, I think he's really doing well. Huh. This one is from Chris L on Twitter, and question for all, have you seen the upcoming fan animation Children of the Night, and if so, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, yes. I have seen, I saw the Animic, I saw, I've seen some of the animation that they've done, and I am really looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it being a Luna fan. Um, so it looks awesome. Um, I can't wait for it. I think they're like a month or two out yet, but uh, really looking forward. Yeah, to it. I uh, actually I worked with Jordana before on a project. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys have ever seen the uh, Heaven's Light thing with Mando Pony as singing yes. as a young Discord. Yes. I actually I did the um, all the sound effects in that, but that was back when I didn't have as many as I do now. Nice. But. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Jordana does. She's really talented, and mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing what her and her husband come out with. Oh, yeah. Oh. <sighs> this one's from Bricky149. Question for Dusty. Will you sing for us? <laughs> sing? What do you want me to sing? Yeah. What? What do you want? Some Elton John. <laughs> Elton John. Oh, goodness. Um... Smile song, some people are saying too. Uh, okay. Um. 
Well, I've been do I was doing rock and ro I was doing like metal earlier today, so my voice isn't in all that great shape. So I'll try something. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> and Daniel is traveling tonight on a plane. I can see the red tail lights heading for Spain. Oh, and I can see Daniel waving goodbye. God, it looks like Daniel must be the clouds in my eyes. How's that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's so creepy about it is that my real name is actually Daniel. I hope you enjoyed that. There you go. <laughs> I had to say it, but I, oh my god, that was good. That was good. That, that's, my, that's actually my karaoke warm-up song when I go to karaoke nights. <laughs> and now everyone knows what my real name is. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Still call me Screw or Screwball. I don't... Uh, Okay, Dan. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, this one is from Cowboy Day. For you, Rob, uh, what has been your favorite project thus far? Definitely Epic Wub Time. Oh, yeah. I, was, I really, really liked how that turned out. Um, I guess if I could go back, I'd polish up some of the sound effects for the bass cannon. But um, overall, I really liked how that turned out. Because it was something more original than just epic, um, epic meal time, and um, I was so nervous when I was about to release it. I was freaking out, but I'm really glad how positive reception I got. I know in the beginning everybody's like, "Why aren't Vinyl's eyes red?" And I'm just like, I, I knew it was gonna happen, but at the same time, I didn't care because her. I don't really believe in arguing over people who. I think to quote somebody who I saw once. They said, "F the creators, her eyes are red." And when you have that kind of logic, oh, I'm like, I'm no, not, no, no, I'm no, not no, gonna, no, 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 that's no, that's no, disrespectful no, no, disrespectful and just to, plain silly. Yeah, disrespectful to the creators. It is. You don't. Or as I like to that. call it, it's garbage, and I don't believe in it. Thank you. Respect people. Have respect really... for the show. Have respect for the people who work on it, and have respect for the creators. If you're having that kind of attitude, I don't want to talk to you. Exactly. Don't want I don't even want you I don't want you near bad. me. Okay? If you don't have any respect for the show, if you don't have any respect for the characters, if you don't have any respect for the creators, move along. Okay? They're the ones that brought us this show and it's yeah. because we're here today. And that's why we're here. Because of it. Okay? We're here because they brought us this awesome show. Why would you disrespect them by saying, oh, well, I'm not going to listen to them. Her eyes are red, blah, blah, blah. We made her eyes red, blah, blah, blah. No. Her eyes were red until the creator said, no, they're not red. They're magenta. It's like, okay. There you go. Now you have canon. Now you work with it. Okay. You work within the show. So everything was fun up until that happened. Okay, now her eyes are magenta. Or, or, and you go on with that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, even people from the show have said their eyes are magenta. So I'm like, look, her eyes are magenta. I mean, they even had the leak the week beforehand. Yeah. And I mean, it's just like, okay, so her eyes are the same eyes as Rainbow Dash. Actually, I did research. Yeah. I went through a whole list of all the background ponies. Magenta colored eyes, the same eyes as Rainbow Dash, is mm -hmm. the the most popular color for background characters. Yep. And I mean, it's close enough to red that it, I mean, it works. It works. And I don't think it's that big of a deal. She's still a badass. It doesn't matter. Yep. Move along. Have fun. <laughs> Next. Um, this one's from Brony... Uh, <laughs> uh, Brony Alchemist. Question for all. How can someone who's not artistically inclined contribute to the pony fun? Who's not artistically uh, inclined? Um, well, what, what are well, you... Well, it just depends yeah. on what your talent is. Yeah. Yeah. What are you, I mean, what are you good at? I'm not an artist at all. But Rob Bob is... Okay, he says he's not an artist, so he's good at uh, get, I mean, I'm, getting I'm, people together... Uh, He's a good sound tech, and he's good at, at production. He's good. At, he's he's a good product or, or product manager. So therefore, what does he do? He make he gets all these really great people together to make really great animations, and do the sound and some voices for it. So basically, he's taken and I write it and he writes it. All the ideas, and I think that's that's my yeah. So he's a writer. Really like is that me? Our team, I think, 
I don't want to, I'm sound like I'm bragging, but I'm really impressed with how much professionalism and just good stuff that we push out that my team has, because, yeah. you know, I mean, I work with Makan, Mando Pony, Noah King, Evan, um, they're all really talented people, and honestly, I'd say that if you can't do something, you're, I don't believe in working alone. That's no. That's something that I've... I've had some conflicts with some other people. Not conflicts, but I've had disagreements. And I believe that if you want a really good product, if you work in a team, you'll get the best. Yep. That's, that's really Instead part of, of trying to, most of the fun within, within this fandom is working with other people. I mean, uh, I've had yeah. more fun doing collaboration work on music, uh, collaboration work on the show, than you know doing anything else. You know, it, It's really fun working with the people from EFR. And Rob, Bob, and all of these other guys, and, and uh, doing the music, than sitting here doing it by myself. You know, it's it's more fun to, to find somebody. It's like, what do you do? Okay, find somebody who, who complements what you do. And get together as a team and do more great stuff. You know, everybody's good at something. You're good at something. Figure out what it is. I had I had a guy um, email me on YouTube. He says. I'd, I'm not really all that inclined to art or any of that stuff, but I played the I played the trombone. And I said, you played trombone? Well, hey, look at this. Ska guy, ska guy, ska guy. All these guys who do ska, pony music, are probably looking for a trombone player. Go look at those guys. You know? So I sent him off, and he said he found somebody to work with. And it's like, take what you know and what you're doing and go find somebody who's doing something similar that you can actually, you know, contribute to. And then have a good time. And it's just, that's the way it is, man. Go find somebody who you can actually work with. There's a saying I have in life that I, I try to promote to everything I do. Situation depending. It's don't talk about it, be about it. Yeah. Make horse apples happen. Okay? Don't just sit around waiting for horse apples to happen. Make it happen. Okay? Because nobody's going to make it happen unless you do. No one's going to give you the life you want unless you go out and you take it. And you yeah, get work out there for and it. Show yourself. And show yourself. And, and and meet these people, and and if they have time to, to, to work with you, they will. I mean, almost everybody I've come, come across has said, yeah, let's do something. You know, Mando Pony's busy. He really is, because he's trying to make a career out of what he's doing. So he's sort of come back, you know, uh, from doing collaborations. But there's many more people out there that are now just getting into the, the Brony music scene that need people to work with, you know, and, and it's, it's great. There's always people out there to work with. Um... So figure out what you're great at, or good at, and find somebody who compliments it, and then go have fun. Yeah, but also make sure that it's morally right. I mean, yeah, don't don't be like, oh, I can't write my own club fiction. I need to go find a bunch of people to write because that's <laughs> it's still you know it's you want to find something that you feel is morally right. Yeah, and if you don't feel it's if you still question it, you should ask other people if it's morally right. Yeah, and then you can do from there because I mean you know. Yeah. If writing is your talent, you can still work with people on it. I mean, I, I, um, you know, I work with people when I write stuff. Mm -hmm. I know I usually come up with the ideas, but I like to. I work it's better always, in a team. It's always bouncing stuff. And off when people. I run my ideas past, I just, I just finished like the song. Like when I run my ideas yeah, past good. Mando Pony or No Acting, I always get better results than when I try to do it myself. Absolutely. If you don't have somebody to bounce off of, you're basically with your own ideas. I just finished the song today before the show started, and as soon as I get out of here. I'm going over to Skype where all the, the music guys are and say, here guys, tear this apart. Tell me what's wrong and I'll go fix it. And sure enough, they will. And the song will be better for it. And I will be a better artist for it. Because if you don't have people that can give you honest opinions on what you're doing wrong, you will never grow. Never. Okay? Next. Oh, this, this shocked me, really. Uh, Theo Rack uh, made a comment of, um, uh, or question. Um, I never knew this, Dusty, but uh, are you aware that more and more of your videos on YouTube are blocked in Germany? The reason my how do you approach that? The reason my videos are blocked in Germany is because Germany is a police state. Oh. Okay. Basically, some of the music I use in my videos is owned by certain publishing houses. And those publishing houses do not have uh, rights to, to uh, promote that music in Germany. And it's only Germany. 
It's not anywhere else in the world, okay? Germany is the only country that does this, and I don't know why. So, I'm not going to handcuff myself on what I create because Germany won't show it. Okay, I'm very sorry for that, but I do what I do because I have fun doing it. I find a song that I like to do and I go have fun doing it, and if it's not, if they won't, Germany won't publish it, that's not my fault. That's basically the publishing house doesn't have permission to, for it to go into Germany, and there's nothing I can do about it. There's not a dang thing I can do about it. And, and that's just it. Um, because I do what they call filk, which is changing lyrics to current songs, um, the publishing house still has rights to that song. Um, I'm still doing a parody, which means I can put it up on YouTube. But that publishing house still has rights to that music. And if they, aren't, if they don't have the right to send it into Germany, that won't go there. And that's, that's just their, all there is to it. So, I'm sorry for that, but there's nothing I can do. Yeah, that's... I... Eh, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I think we've got time for one more. Make it one good. More. Make it good. Uh, I'll make it good. This is Come the Cowboy me. Dave. Uh, question is for you guys. Um, are there any side projects... <laughs> are there any side projects you are interested in working with other brony artists slash musicians on? Hmm. <laughs> Go ahead, Rob. That's a good question. Well, I mean, I'm working on uh, uh, I'm working on Double Rainbow, but uh, and I guess our own team has so many projects. Yeah. I guess um, none that I know of, but I know there's a bunch of good ones out there, and I definitely look forward to working with. Oh, uh, you know what? There is there's some artists on DA who I really like, who I wouldn't mind working with sometime. I don't know where or how. Maybe they could do concept for future projects we do. But uh, his name is uh, Rick M. Uh, he does some awesome human MLP stuff. I can post his link in the chat. But I really love his human style. Mm -hmm. It's really great. And sometime I wouldn't mind actually uh, working with him because he just has an amazing style. That's cool. I, I have so many irons in the fire right now with my own projects. I mean, I've got an album I'm trying to finish, which is like two songs from being done. Um, I can't wait to get that done because you guys are gonna love it. The uh, so I'd love to do. I'd love to have somebody animate one of my songs. It would make my day like you wouldn't believe. But I, I, it's just one of those things where all these animators are so busy doing their own stuff. You know, I don't I don't want to talk to them about it. Um, and I love working with the people I'm working with now. I work with The Notive, and I work with Cyril Lyric, and I work with all of these guys on my music, and it's awesome, and I love, I love doing it. It's so much fun. Um, but, you know, I'd love to work with Mando Pony, but he's really professional, and what I do is pretty much amateurish. You know, I, I, what I do is nowhere near what he does. Um, so it's, it's one of those things where if I could work with Mando Pony, I've, I've got my friend Mick Collins um, in New York is actually, he says he wants to write me a song. He's a professional musician. So if he writes me a song, an original song, I just can't wait to work with him. And he has nothing to do with Pony um, at all. So I'm, it's, if you want to say it's side project, I would love it if he sends me a song, because he said he would. Um, but he's a very, very busy professional musician. He's, he's recording his latest album right now. Plus, plus he's a lead on a clothing line. Plus he's producing for other people. Plus he's doing something else. So I actually got to sit down with him for about five hours on Thursday before BronyCon because I flew in early just basically to see him because I hadn't seen him in five years. He'd either been doing music or on tour or whatever. And he's another Detroiter, and we met 20 years ago. And it was wonderful to catch up with him. Um, but just one of those things where if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'd really love it for, for it to happen. Um, but we'll see. Um, and with that... We are at the end of the show. Boo. Boo. I know, we were having so much fun. Um, so, we're going to go with the weekly call-out sheet of shows that you can look forward to coming up here on Everfree Radio. And we're going with Reading Rainbow. Well, actually, you know what? Reading Rainbow's on an off week. Because they were. it's a bi-weekly show. So, Reading Rainbow will be next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, and that is going to be a radio play of famous, really good fanfic. So, catch that. Um, their first show is up on the channel, so check it out. QD Art Crusaders, the CAC, will discuss the best fan art bronies have to offer Tuesdays 
at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific every week. Then we're going to go with the EQI guys, Equestrian Inquirer, comedy and news straight from the desk in Ponyville. Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Sketchy, Sketchy Sounds live songcast will play live for you for two hours on Thursday nights. Oh, actually, it's Thursday, 11 Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, mid-afternoon, excuse me. Uh, Brony Breakdown, Thursdays, Saber Spark and Paleo will break down everything that went through in Brony on the week. Um, that will be 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on Thursdays. Uh, Luna Republic Takeover Nightmare Moon will take over this very radio station for all of your requests. Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Saturday Night Songs with Michelle Kraber. That has Mando Pony. And she is the voice actress of Apple Bloom and the singing voice of Sweetie Belle. And she will be Saturdays, 4 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. A State of Brony is your trance, electro, and house music show. Get your 70s can headphones out because you're going to need it for that show. That is Saturdays, 11 a.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. And then Radiant Eclipse ends the week as a podcast Sundays, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. So, that is your call out for the week. And we are here at the end of the show yet again. Robbie Bobby. Yes. Thank you for taking time out of your family vacation to be here Thank you. with us tonight. It's always a pleasure, Dusty. Absolutely. And keep us informed. If you have anything you want to talk about on the show for two, three minutes, let me know. And we'll, we'll pop you, um, pop yeah, you I mean, in. I guess keep an eye on our Tumblr mm -hmm. and our Twitter. We'll be releasing more updates on Epic Cross Over Time, Uncle Chan Adventures over the next month or so. And we'll also be releasing that show with Vinyl and Octavia. Awesome. But thanks again for stopping by, everybody. Absolutely. Thanks for everybody. And Screwball, yeah. another wonderful show. Thank you, my friend. And with that, for everybody here at Everfree Radio, and for everybody at Everfree Northwest, I love you. And I'll see you there for the manliest voice acting panel in the world. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. We hate to leave you, but we'll be back soon. Good night, sweetheart. Good night. Good night, sweetheart. Good night.